Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you bow your heads in prayer with me? Blessed and almighty God, Heavenly Father, grant to me your Holy Spirit that my words would be your words. Grant to your people your Holy Spirit that they would hear your words and be edified by them. In Jesus' name, amen. So in the movie Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, there's a, uh, the, the whole premise of the movie is that everybody's trying to find the Ark of the Covenant. And in the movie, there's a, a medallion. First of all, I hope I'm not giving away any spoilers here. The movie is about 40 years old. So if you haven't seen it, it's on you, not me. Um, but the, uh, the, the whole premise is that they're trying to find the Ark of the Covenant. And there's a, there's a medallion that has uh, engraved on it specific instructions on, on how to build this staff that when it's held in the right spot at the right time of day with the medallion on top of it, the sun shines through and points right to where you need to dig to find that Ark of the Covenant. Well, Indiana Jones has the medallion, so he has the full set of instructions, but the bad guys, they only have one half of the medallion. They only have an engraving. <clears throat> they only have the engraving from one side of the medallion. And when Indiana Jones realizes this, he says, the staff they're making is too long. They're digging in the wrong place. They're digging in the wrong place. The first verse from our Old Testament reading today got me thinking about that line from Raiders of the Lost Ark. They're digging in the wrong place. Proverbs 25.2 says, It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings to search things out. It seems that people are always, have always been looking for God, or at least they're looking for a God. Uh, but they constantly look in the wrong place. right? They're digging in the wrong place. God has made himself known to us, but the way he did it it seems foolish. It seems foolish to the world around us. And if you stop and think about it, it might even seem, seem kind of foolish to us if we didn't know who God is. Because God made himself known in the form of a man who died on a cross. This is almighty God, the king of creation, Lord of the universe. And yet he made himself known in a man who died. This is ridiculous, and yet it's true. God has revealed himself by concealing himself in a place that seems like foolishness to the rest of the world. But it is the glory of God to conceal himself, to conceal things, and he has concealed himself in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. But we sinful human beings often go looking for God in other ways. Places, places that mainly start with ourselves, our desires, or our experiences. But doing this is like digging in the wrong place. However, if we keep digging in that same place, we are sure to find a God. We might even call that the God, but it will be the wrong God. It's not the one true and living God who is found only in the person and work of Jesus Christ. And these are the things that I want to walk through with you today. How God reveals himself by concealing himself in Jesus, and how when you go digging in the wrong place, you find the wrong God, a God who cannot save. And I want to start by talking about what that God would look like if we started building our God according to our desires and emotions, if we started digging in the place of our desires and our emotions, if we, if we built that God we wanted, what would that God look like? I have a short audio clip to play for you here. It's, it's from a podcast called Fighting for the Faith, and the, the purpose of this podcast is to call out false teaching and then point people to true teaching, the truth found in Jesus. This is a, 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 sat a satirical clip, so it's kind of funny, but when you think about it, it's also, uh, it's also kind of sad. So I want to play that clip for you right now. Welcome to build -A god How can I help you? Hello. I received a Build-A-God certificate for my birthday, so I'm here to build my own deity. 
Oh, this has got to be so exciting for you. Oh, it really is. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we have to do is determine whether your god is male, female, or unisex. Men are pigs anyway. She has to be female. Great choice. Now we have to select some of the attributes of your goddess. What do you provide? Do you want her to be kind, loving, compassionate, just, angry, righteous, wrathful? The goddess I believe in would only be loving and kind. Perfect. Now, is there any kind of sin that needs tending to by your goddess? Sin? You know, things like lying, cheating, stealing, murder, homosexuality. Well, I definitely want my goddess to be gay affirming. And sin itself just feels so negative. I'm a good person, and I think my goddess will think everyone else is too. Oh, wonderful. Your goddess is coming along beautifully. Now we have to get to the difficult questions. Does your goddess offer an afterlife? Yes, my goddess would let everyone go to heaven. Except for Hitler, Genghis Khan, and good for nothing ex boyfriend. Oh, excellent, excellent. Now for the final step, you have to name your goddess. Hmm. I think I'm going to name her Jesus. Oh, wonderful. That's what everyone names their god. your own emotions and build the God that you want, the God that you think is loving and kind and great and good, you end up building a, a false God. You end up building a God according to what you want and you desire. And in this God, this God that this lady built, you could see that, that this goddess, she would be loving and kind and think that everyone is a good person. She would be affirming that goddess would be affirming, welcoming everyone into the afterlife, except maybe the worst of the worst. And then, of course, she names her god, her goddess, Jesus. And that's what you get when you, when you look to yourself, your own desires, to make your own god. You find a god that is self-affirming. You find a god that, that, doesn't, that can't save you because you don't need saving. If your God is affirming you for being you, then what good is Jesus? If you are already good, then why do you need Jesus who said that there is only one who is good? You being good don't need God to save you because you have already saved yourself. This is a a God that affirms you. This is a God who is weak and a God who only exists to make you happy, thereby making you your own God. When the revelation of God comes from you, from your desires, your wants, your emotions, you end up getting the God you want, not the God that is. Another way we dig in the wrong place when we're looking for God is looking at our own experiences, the places that we've been, the events that have happened to us, to, uh, to the people around us. And so I have, to illustrate this, I have a, a photo here that I want to put up on the screen. This is a beautiful picture. This is uh, in Hawaii somewhere. I, I would love to tell you the name of the place, but I just can't pronounce it. Um, but this is a, a, a lovely mountaintop scene you're looking out over, <coughs> excuse me, you're looking out over this lush green valley. The ocean is there in front of you. You can see uh, forever. You can see forever. I imagine myself standing here at the top of this mountain at, at sunset, you know, as the sun is going down and the, the colors are all playing together in the skies, the reds, the blues, the purples, the oranges all coming together and, and having this, this truly religious experience, experiencing God there on that mountaintop just kind of takes your breath away. And then I imagine that because I'm standing there on that mountain and most of the mountains in Hawaii are born out of, you know, volcanic activity, I imagine, I imagine that mountain erupting as I'm standing there. The mountain, that, that scene right there where you're standing, that, that because of its beauty and its wonder that just took your breath away, now literally takes your breath away, right? It wipes you out in fire and ash, and we don't have to go to, to theoretical 
to the theoretical to get this point across. We can go back to the real. We can take that photo down if you don't mind. Uh, but we can go to our own experiences, right? I mean, last year we had rain abundantly. Everybody was happy with the rain that we had last year. In fact, I remember at times we were saying, I wish it would stop raining. And this year, what do we have? We need rain so desperately, but it's just not coming, at least not in the amount that we need. And then in our own lives, there are days when we're, when we're happy and we're healthy and everything is going right, and then the next day, you get diagnosed with cancer. One day, a baby is born. The next day, a baby dies. What kind of God is that? If you built your God based on your experiences, what kind of God would you have? You have this God of contradictions. You have this God that, that sure is a God of power and might and rules and reigns, but you also have this contradiction between good and bad, friend and foe, heaven and hell, angel and demon. This is not a God who saves because this God makes you save yourself. Please, God, please don't kill me. Just spare me, God. I'll do whatever you need me to do, God. Just let me live. God, I will offer up to you, I will sacrifice this bull or this goat or this child. If you spare me, I will do whatever it takes to be saved, God. How can you know if you've done what it takes to please this God? How can you know if this God is for you or against you? How can you know if he's on your side? You can't. You just can't. It is the glory of God to conceal things. But why? Why does our God reveal himself and his power by concealing it in what looks like weakness? He does it for you. He does it for the comfort of his people so that you know, firstly, that he is God, the one true and living God, and secondly, that he is for you, that he is your God. If one wants to find the true God, there's only one right place to start digging. And digging in the right place doesn't start with you. It starts with Jesus. It starts at the cross. If you want to see God, that is where you must look. Jesus is not the build a God, God. He's not what anyone would have expected. He's the son of a carpenter, a man without a home, a king without a throne, a God who dies. And yet, this God who dies, this God-man, is the one who calms the storm, who heals the sick and the lame, who restores sight to the blind, and the one who raises the dead. This man is God in human flesh. He does, only, he does the things only God can do. God reveals himself in the person and work of Jesus, and yet he is hidden from all those who refuse to see, from all those who refuse to believe. He, ref he reveals himself by concealing himself. Our God reveals himself, by conceal reveals his power by concealing it in weakness. He reveals his victory by concealing it in death. He reveals himself by concealing himself in flesh and blood. The man, Jesus Christ, the man who died and rose again. And that death and resurrection is how you know that God is for you, that he is your God, that he's on your side. The cross of Christ is the glory of God. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he said to his disciples, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. That's John 13, 31. As Jesus is about to be led to the cross, he points to that as the moment of glory. 
God's glory is not revealed. His true glory is not revealed in creation, the sun, the moon, the stars, the beautiful picturesque scene. The true glory of God is revealed in a suffering, dying, bloody man who was buried and then rose again to bring salvation to his people. The glory of God is not the works of creation. The glory of God is the work of salvation. It is your salvation. The glory of God is the cross of Jesus Christ where he bled and died paying for your salvation. How do you know that God is for you? Because he became one of you. He knows what it's like to sacrifice and to suffer. He knows what it's like to lose a loved one. He knows what it's like to face death. He knows what it's like to die. All this he did for you so that you would know the love that he has for you, so that you could look to him in your hour of struggle and strife. How do you know that God is for you? Because he gave his son for you, because he gave himself for you. If you want to know who God is and if he is for you, if he's your God, look to Jesus. Start by digging in the right place. Start by digging at the foot of the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep and guard your hearts in Christ Jesus from now to life everlasting.